So everyone at home has been asking me to do a day in the life. So let me start with a life in a day. If you don't know who I am, my name is Yanni Sherilambus. I'm Greek Cypriot and I was born in a small place called Wembley in London. Wembley is probably most famous for the football stadium. So this is where England play all their games. As well as football, superstars have performed at Wembley. Michael Jackson, Madonna, Rihanna, Queen, and the list goes on and on. And about eight minutes from Wembley Stadium is where I used to live, on a road called Ravenscroft Avenue. So this is where it all started, Ravenscroft Avenue, HA9 postcode, Wembley. This is my parents' road, and they still live on this road now. Right over there, you can see the bus stop. That's where I used to get the bus to head over to work. When I was 16, I used to walk to school from here. I used to play Knockdown Ginger. Remember Knockdown Ginger? I don't think you could do that nowadays, where you'd knock the door and you'd run away. Um, and you see when they open it up. Or Pom Pom 123, remember that? The kids would stay out and then your mum would shout, come back, lunchtime, dinner. Street lights would come on and be like, when the lights come on, you need to come home. It's a totally different world to to what it is now, to what my kids are experiencing growing up. Huh? Yes. It's nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye. See you later. Um, see, people are nice in Wembley. See, what a nice guy. Is that delivery man? Yeah, delivery man on his bike. So this is my parents' garage, and this is where I used to park my cars growing up. It used to be actually a single garage here, and there used to be a wall there, and I made them extend it so you could put two cars in. So I used to have the BMW, and it used to be a convertible, and I used to have the hard top. And I was like, if I take the hard top off, where can I leave it? There's nowhere to leave it. So I thought, hold on a minute. I wonder if I can make something like a frame. So when you take the hard top off, you put it in the air, and then the car goes underneath, and that's exactly what we did. So. The front of the hard top would go there and then the rear section would sit here, but the car could still go underneath and that's where I used to leave the hard top over the summer. A lot of people would just leave it up against the wall. We didn't have the space for it. I used to put it up in the air and literally, I remember you just, two people would come around, lift it, bring it down. I'd drive obviously have the car backwards and then just put the hard top back on. And that's how I used to do it. I'll tell you one more story. I got banned for driving for 12 months uh, for dangerous driving in, um, Renault 19, I wrote it off. But anyway, I bought another car and obviously I was waiting to get my license back. And I had my car parked here. And obviously while I was on a band for 12 months, I was doing things to the car and I had a Clifford alarm. So when you had a Clifford alarm, you could have an Intelli start, which means you could start the car from the bottom. But they always said, don't put that on a car that's a manual. So I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. Anyway, obviously me being different, I put it on a manual car. I had my car parked at the front. And I remember one day I was in the house and I was trying to be clever. And I thought, yeah, let me just start my car because I always had the sports exhaust. Start the car. And I was bam, 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 bam. I was like, what the hell? I left the car in gear and it jumped straight into the front wall. Lucky the car was real close to the front so it didn't have too far to go. But it used to try and start the car three times so it could hit in the wall. Yeah, I wasn't happy. Damaged the front bumper and the wing. Um, but yeah, that's a story that people don't know. So I'll take you to the back. I'm not going to show you the front of the house, but I'll show you the back. This is where I pretty much spent my life like growing up but yeah my parents still live in Wembley and people will be like you're rich why don't you move them out listen I've tried to move my parents out of this house for years they're not moving they're like this is what we know we know our neighbors we know the area we don't want to move so if anyone trying to dig me out saying why don't your parents move out they don't want to move Listen, the house ain't bad anyway, but they like it here. <laughs> memories, memories, Nicholas, memories, memories. See, not all nice and easy, nice big <laughs> houses and living the, living the life, designer track suits and nice trainers and stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. Humble, be humble. Yeah. Preston Park. There you go, look at that. Wow, it did not look like that when I came here. I really didn't like school, especially primary school. She got like a bit of a weird feeling inside me. That is where the learning began. Yeah, I didn't do well. <laughs> I wasn't good in primary school. But this is this is where it happened. Have you ever gone back to your primary school and like and seen it, actually got a real weird feeling inside my gut. Like, uh, I don't want to go there today. Preston Park. 
you know, I actually think there was a big park actually behind as well. It's very eerie. So I came here about 40 odd years ago. That's a long time. This is weird. This is like a trip down memory lane. Who would have known, eh? This is where it all began and then I've come to where I've come to now. Man, this is never like this. Things have changed in 40 years where you've got cameras, gates, like it's real protective now. Not like it used to be. You could just go to school, no stress, no drama. Didn't need all these cameras everywhere. Right, let's head over, let's go to my secondary school. That's only around the corner as well. This was St. Gregory's uh, Catholic High School. So I'm Greek Orthodox. I had to use my friend Ara to get in because he's Armenian, he's like Christian. And obviously I'm Orthodox, which is very, very similar. So I used him, so I was my cousin to get in here. Here it is, and it looks exactly the same. St. Gregory's High School. St. Gregory's High School. This was in Kenton, so it's like Wembley, Kenton area. Let's have a look, boys. Let's go and have a look. How do you feel when you go to school? Is it like, is it weird? Mm, is it annoying? Yeah. You got secondary school to come. Yeah. I wasn't good at school. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I wasn't, I wasn't good. I didn't like coming to school. I came because I had to come to school. But I guess I take after you. I guess you take after me. You still come to school, but listen, you got to come to school to learn, which is important. I'd like to come back actually and do like, I like to speak to the pupils and say, listen, I went to this school. Uh, we used to have like fights with Claremont. So you know, you always have like the two schools used to fight with each other. School boys, school, you've got this all to come. You've got three left and you've got... Another... Yeah, you're, you're here for a long uh, time. 11. You're here for a long time. Well? Sorry, my girls, man, they watch your Insta all the time. <laughs> How you doing, you okay? I'm fast, I see why I see brother. <laughs> I'm, coming, I'm taking it back to Wembley when I used to live here. Yeah, I live around here, man. You live around That's my school. Oh, is it? Yeah, I went to St. Greg's. Man. Yeah. Hopefully a lot of people, your entrepreneurship rubbed off on local people, yeah? <laughs> I hope so. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, like that one day, yeah? <laughs> one day. No? One day. See you later. Yeah, Take man. care. See you later. He's got an X6M. He ain't doing bad. <laughs> It's different back then. I don't even know the calculations back. So we'd have first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, and then it was sixth form, and then you'd leave, go to college or university, which I never did. You didn't do sixth form? I did sixth form for one year. I always wanted to leave, I always wanted to go and work. I was always about working and making money and just, uh, just doing things with my life. I didn't, didn't enjoy sitting there reading and studying and just heading the books. Just couldn't, couldn't do it. Struggled a lot. So my first ever job was a place called Do It All, which is not here anymore. Do It All is like the B&Q of nowadays. They used to get the bus down here, and it used to be here on the left, but like, <laughs> it's so changed. Like, I just put flats, blocks up. It literally used to be in there, which is, mad strange considering there is nothing there this was like an industrial estate she had like tiles places she had do it all i used to wear like blue dungarees because that was the uniform i'd work on the till and I'd, I'd make paint so like dulux paint i was like a paint technician skills uh, we'd have the machine and people come to you with the samples can you make these and you have to get the at the tub with the primer and then obviously the colour and then mix it and then the tin which do that um, you get your colour and give it a weight open it it's like, okay sir but yeah ah that's, <laughs> oh, that's memories that's memories right there if you're working at do it all I'll tell you a cool story though we got married here because obviously it was on lockdown so we got married at like the Brent Town Hall and when I went in I gave her my name she's like yeah, you look familiar you look familiar you used to live in Wembley and I was like yeah yeah she goes yeah, like, I know you, I know you, I know you. She goes, where did you work? I said, when I was young. She's like, yeah, I said, I used to work at Doodle. She goes, I know you, we used to work together. Insanely, we used to work together when we were like 17, 18 years old. And she actually married me and my wife, like all those years later, uh, which was mad, like really, really weird that she'd actually remembered me from back in the day. And she married us, shout out to Cetel. <laughs> Anyone else from Doodle? If you used to work in Do It All about 30 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, 28 years ago, hit me up, let me know. So 
So we're in Collindale right now. Over here is Collindale Retail Park. And that building on the corner used to be MFI. Do you remember MFI? MFI, I would say is equivalent to um, IKEA, I think. We used to sell you like flat pack um, furnishings and obviously you'd go home and you'd have like all these all these flat packs and you'd have to take them apart and there'd be screws and bits everywhere and you have to make them. Um, so that was then behind, I used to work at a place called Office World. Um, I was assistant manager there. So Office World would sell back then typewriters, um, they had like concession cycle called PC World that would sell all like the computers, like the early days of the computers. So that's where Office World used to be. It's now called Lewis's. So I remember driving up here. I used to just always park my car out the front and we weren't supposed to. That'd be my space. So that way then no one could park one side of me and I could always see it from, from the door. That'd always be my parking space right there. And I think I was one of the youngest, if not the youngest assistant manager in all of the Office World branches. Um, and there was a guy he was the manager, I think, called Gary Francis. I remember Gary. Um, so me and Gary used to run the business. That was fun. I really enjoyed those days. I'm not quite sure how old I was. I was definitely one of the youngest, if not the youngest, assistant manager. Nothing's the same anymore. I don't think Office World exists. Do it or doesn't exist. Is there like um, like a common theme here? All the places I worked at have all gone bankrupt. Brent Cross. Brent Cross is like my local shopping centre. This was long before the days of uh, Westfields. Yeah, Brent, Brent Cross was like the one. It was like Brent Cross. You had Harlequin Centre, I think, in Watford. Marks and Spencers. I used to work in customer services upstairs. So I used to get people returning. I used to get these like old little ladies. They used to return their bras. And they were like, we've never worn them. And I'm like, you can see they're dirty. And like, you have like a bone in the bra. And the bone was poking out. And I'm like, Nope, nope, that's how we that's how we got it. Okay then. So I'd be arguing all day long in customer service you returns. And that's how you actually actually build um, your confidence to deal with people and speak to people. Because I was really young and dealing with different people and men, women, different ages, different races. I left customer services because I wanted to earn more money. And the way they said you could earn more money is if you go down and work in foods and do the night shift. So obviously you still always get paid more to do a night shift. And I was like, cool, I'm happy to do that. So I'd come to work at like nine, 10 o'clock at night and finish at like seven, eight in the morning. I'd then come home, I would sleep for a few hours and I'd have the rest of the day to do what I wanted to do. So yeah, night shifts were cool. But I remember freezing like the gloves on and obviously doing all the food stacking all the food, all the shelves before the store would open. But you could have music on, you could have your headphones in, because you didn't have to deal with anyone, you weren't dealing with staff then, it's just you and a bunch of staff just stacking the shelves. Worked here for a long time, long, long time. Used to crave that, that month's wage when it used to turn up, and I'm like, yes! And you see how much the tax man takes, and national insurance. That's it. But... Got this all to come, mate. See, this is where I started working, yeah? yeah. That's it, got the other one over there. This one just on his phone. If you've got kids, I bet your kids are always on their phones. Uh, she's got 40, 14 now. She's got an attitude, she's got 14 and 10. This one's still a bit, a bit of a kid. Needs to cut his hair though. Yeah. And this one's like, I'm well, 14, what dad? I'm cool, it. Look at me, I'm cool, it. I'm a cool dad, am I not a cool dad? Yeah. When you say to people, say, what did your dad do? Say, you used to work at Marks and Spencer stacking shelves. <laughs> yeah, that's what you should say. Nothing wrong with that. So right over there, you can see an estate agent called Smith Melzack. I wasn't an estate agent as such. I used to work for a guy called Adam Goldsmith, and he had a company called Town and Country Developments, and he had an office at the back there where we used to go round and we used to buy or tie in contracts for like four or five houses in a row, say to them, we're gonna give them more money, we would then go to planning, get planning, and then buy all those houses, and then sell the planning on. They'd go and speak to the individuals in the house and say, would you sell your house? They'll say no, and then you're like, okay, well, we'll give you 50 grand more than what it's worth. And they'll be like, really? So yeah, we just need to tie you in for a contract for two years, because you used to take a long time to get planning permission. You'd then get the planning permission, you'd go back to these people, you'd buy their houses, and then you'd turn, um, you'd turn it. For a, for a real, real hefty profit. Or if you had a good team, you could actually do the build yourself. But that is what he used to do, and he made an absolute fortune. And that was my early days of experience of property. And obviously I learned how it would work. I've done training 
at um, an estate agent as well. This is Kingsbury High Road, and I used to own a hairdresser's here called Tops, um, which is down here on the left. So I wonder if it's still a hairdresser. It's quite a small shop. No, I can't cut hair. Um, it was a business owned by uh, my cousin back in the day. He said he wanted to sell it, so I was like, you know, I'll take it over. There was um, a manager Esther called Anna. So literally, all I had to do was own the business. I bought the business. She would run it all. She had the clients, and then she had two or three staff there. Um, so remember, guys, you can always own a business even if you can't do it. So I couldn't cut hair. I can't. I can't blow dry hair. I can't do colour. I owned the business. What's it called now? Mooney's Mooney's Hair and Beauty so that's it there it was at the time when I had when I was doing the animise as well I was doing cars um, so I sort of pretty much left it and let my dad just just deal with the day to day running and my dad was getting old and stuff so I was like let's just sell it so we just got rid of it and put it up for sale and sold it but it done well hairdress is a good business if you get it right and you've got good clients it's a really really good business so one of them two shops either Angus Burgers or the off licence was my phone shop and to give you an idea how far back I used to have it, I used to sell 8210s, 8850s, like the little Nokia phones, all the pay as you go, SIM cards, I used to do a load of repairs, I used to do the covers like the 3210s, the 6310s, I used to do screens all day long, everyone used to break their screens. I think the front was a post office if I remember, the front was a post office and we had like the little section at the back um, where we used to sell phones. Yep, I had a phone shop. Not for long. I can't even remember what it was called, but it was many, many moons ago. Yeah, I had a partner. We had it for a, for a little while and then got rid of that. I'm trying to think of time scales, timelines, because I don't even know how old I was when I had that. I know when I was working at Do It All, I was 16, 17, early 20s maybe. Yeah, early 20s, mid 20s. Yeah, phone shop was right there. Wembley, Wembley Park. Preston Road car wash. <laughs> What's that in? Hey. You well? How are you? Hey, you okay, Jimmy? So it used to be Jimmy and Kel. Uh, where's, where's Kel? Yeah, he's inside. Is he inside? You good? How are you, man? Still smoking? Not much. Not much? No. So I've known oh, Jimmy and Kel and his family oh, for yeah. for forever and his sons. I remember his son. I know he's got, he's got twin boys and stuff. I can actually tell you some stories. One of his kids had a bad, um, really bad eye. Do you remember, Jimmy? Yeah. Your boy, when he had the bad eye in Moorfields. Yeah. And we went there, didn't we, we for years. There. Yeah, I never forget I that. Him. That's it, you will. He's him. He had, he had the bad eye when he was a kid. And um, they're from Albania and they didn't know. Look, okay. you okay? Yeah, yeah, that's how you. Um, they're from Albania, so they struggled to speak English, didn't really know what to do. And he came to me like, Yanni, I've got a problem. My son, his eye. Yanni used to come every time then. I remember I, I stayed. Get that holding Adi like this, little baby, three months old. Yeah. Crazy. How many years ago was that? Uh, they are 17 now, so. 16 and a half years. 16 and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how long ago. That's how far back we go back. Yeah. We go back a long time. Kel's like my little brother. Yeah, Kel's like awesome. my little brother. We yeah. go back. Say hello, Kel. So, what I'm doing, Kel, I'm driving hello. around. I'm driving around the area, showing them where I used to work, like the estate agents, the phone shop. Come to the car wash, um, just showing up my parents. So I we're thought, getting back to the old stories. Yeah? We're going back, That's we're going it. back. It makes us feel young, you know. Does it make us feel young? It does. Uh, when you go through the back memories, you know, you just feel like, hmm, I think we're still young. We're well, still Even young. when I look at the photos, you know, I think, you know. Okay, yeah, so you know, he mentions the photos, you know, let me go inside, let me just show you quickly. Let's just go inside. I'm going to show you some photos on the wall. Are there photos on the wall here? I'm going to uncover because of, of the water. I've covered them, so okay. they don't get this. As I said, I used to come here pretty much every day. Um, I was like mad obsessed with washing my car. And I'd come here, I'd wash my car, and they used to take pictures of everything. So you're going to see pictures, throwback pictures of cars that I used to own and when I used to come here. My Range Rover, look, number plate Y19 NNY, that's me there. Is that you, Jimmy? Oh no, that's Miri. Miri, yeah. Miri, so that was my there, that was that, that was my, uh, my Lambo, my white Gallardo. Oh, there's the Range Rovers, the Lambo. This my BM, be, BMs. This, this used to be, yeah. That was my birthday yeah. party, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. That was my birthday party, it used to pop champagne. champagne everywhere. Just invited everyone. The BM, where's the BMs, man? Where's my BM? 
You'll be, you'll be. Oh, there's my black Ferrari. Oh my God, look. My 360 Spider. Wow. SLRs, look. There's my BM, silver BMW there. This is how far back we go. I brought Theo Walcott here and Bakary Sanya. So I don't know if you can make them out. One of them you can make. Yeah, Theo Walcott, when he was proper, proper young, he just signed for Arsenal from Southampton. And obviously Sanya. Oh, it's a shame the pictures have got so damaged over the years. But they've been, they've been on this wall for 20 years or 15 years or whatever it's been. Yeah, look. SLR, Galaxies, Chrome. This is memories, guys. This is memories. My Porsche's there. Yeah, before the days of digital phones. You take them on the camera and then get them developed and then stick them on the wall. Still smoking? Still smoking one with the other, yeah? Sometimes. This guy smokes and drinks like it's... I know it's an Albanian thing, yeah, <laughs> but my God, he'd, he'd use one cigarette to light another cigarette, and then I'd be like, hell, and he's like, don't worry, what do you smoke a day? 80? 80. 80 cigarettes a day. And you've been doing that for what, 20 years? Yeah, more than 20 years, 22 years. Insane, insane. So, do you smoke? No, no. no. well done. Do any of your boys smoke, Jimmy? No, no, no. None no. of your boys smoke? They see the uncle, you know, smoke. That smokes for them as well. Like. You smoke, you're, smoking, you're, smoking for, you're smoking for everyone. Thank you. Ah, oh, Jimmy, we go oh, back, man. Yeah, man. My parents still live here. So if my parents ever need anything, they'll phone these guys and they will go to my parents' house. They still look after my parents. If I'm, I'm not, I don't live in the area. It's my so. parents too. They're not on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> we go back. We go back a long time. And my yeah. dad, my dad used to do their books. Used to help them. Remember, my dad was well. That's what I'm doing in there, you know, getting ready. To you getting ready to get to drop it to my dad? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but we we got yeah. we got we got 20 years of, of history. Let me show you this, man. This guy here, 17 years. He was driving, hit a tree, and um, in I want to is it. The Albanian thing where people go to the house every single yeah, day. Yeah. Do you remember? And he passed away and I was, I, was, I was with them. I might as well be an Albanian. I was with you so much, yeah, weren't yeah. I? We raised money to send him back yeah. to, to Albania, the coffin and everything. Oh man, that's... God bless him, man. God bless him. This is where we are, we're about. When we spent hours just sitting here at night, they used to have like yeah, a little fire. Look, they always have like a little fire there. We just sit here, just talking. These will be smoking and drinking. I'll just be sitting here talking. <laughs> I didn't smoke or drink. But um, still doing it. So myself and a guy called Nathan used to own this. Nathan's still a very good friend of mine today. And we launched this with JLS. And this was when JLS had just come out. So Marvin and Aston turned up. We had Sanya from Arsenal, Gail Clichy from Arsenal, Jack Wilshire, Will Hoskins, and Adrian Marappa from Watford, Normski. If you're old school, you'll know about Normski, Dynamo, my friend Jalera. So many people turned up. We literally shut the road down. The police turned up saying, what are you lot doing? And we're like, we didn't expect this many people to turn up. And to be fair, it was because of JLS. It was, it was insane. It was absolutely insane. There's a place called PPM, which is up the road in Free and Barnet called Princess Park Manor. So One Direction used to live there, JLS, Girls Aloud, Busted, you name it. Every celebrity football player, musician that were, that were making it, that early days, they used to live there. I didn't really get on with the new owner. I remember going in and I was annoyed that all my pictures were on the wall. So I went in there and I took my pictures off. And what I think he done was, I think he reprinted all the pictures and put a cow's face <laughs> on my face. Um, so it might be quite cool to go in there and see if they're still there. That might be quite funny. Let's get, let's go and have a quick look. I haven't been here in must be ten years, ten plus years. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Hi guys, you're right. Yeah. Hey, you well? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's still on the wall. Look, look, look. What's happening? Okay, brother. I just want to just film some stuff on the wall. Yeah, that's fine. I used to own this place. I know. Oh, do you know? Yeah. I do you. As I said, look how many celebs used to come here. Everyone used to come here back in the day. There used to be loads more pictures on the wall. Oh, there's me. Look, there's me. Look, there's the cow face. So that's my partner, Nathan. Girls allowed. Look, that's me with the cow's face on. It's changed. Like, even now, just looking like that machine there. I remember we had to buy that machine. You change it three days or every five days to clean it. And I remember when we launched, it got so hot because it was continuously drawing. It would just shut down. We couldn't do nothing to wait for it to cool down. Still here, Milkshake City. Even though I don't think me and him talk, but I'm happy to give him a plug. So, uh, but yeah, memories. We couldn't work out how to do our logo. We thought, you know what? 
or better way, a cow looking back with the udders and obviously used it as an M. Genius, genius. This industry is tough. I remember when we used to own it, the windows would get smashed, people would come late at night, you get drunk people. Tough, tough business. Um, yeah, I don't miss it. I don't miss it. It was fun while we had it, but yeah, I definitely don't miss it. Anyway, on to the next one. Some people don't know, I used to work in recruitment, in telecoms recruitment, uh, for a company called Euro Search and Selection. It's actually that building behind you called Kingmaker House. So I worked here for quite a while. I remember those two girls that used to work here, Lucy and Lisa, and they were, they were machines when it came to, to closing deals, and they set up their own business after a, after a while, and they absolutely smashed it. When you work with people that are hungry, get on the phone and they bash the phone continuously, ringing, 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 and then you get knocked back, it doesn't matter, you put it down, you ring again, you get knocked, you put it down. You, that's, that's, that's something that I learned early days. You just got to keep pushing through, pushing through. And it was a bit like, remind me a little bit like Wolf of Wall Street, where if you've done a deal, um, you'd get to ring the bell and then you put the deal on the board. And I remember if I used to do a deal like on a Friday, I would hold the deal back and I'd put it for on a Monday morning so it would stay on my board for the whole week. And you used to ring the bell and everyone's like, yeah, well done, well done, another deal. And then obviously you do another deal and you need to do another deal and obviously you see the board and then you become like top biller. I used to work in the contract department. She had contract and perm. Um, so all the people that I would put in would go in, they'd, they'd work for a month or three months or six months or even a year. And then obviously you'd replace them. And the whole idea was to build relationships with the people that would hire. And I remember I had a company, I think it was called Eco Global, based in Hammersmith. And I got on really well with, with the main person who used to hire us. So literally all the deals would come via me. So I'd be able to put all the staff in. And I'd put in there 30, 40 staff a year. I paid brilliant commission. I earned some good money in recruitment. That was, um, that was good times. Real, real good times. Earned real good money. I had a Porsche boxster at the time for a real short period of time. There was nowhere I could park, and there was like a parking space around the back. And I used to blag my car into the like the staff car park where there was only a select amount of cars that were allowed to park. The management could park there, and I was just like a salesman. Um, come to work, you wear your suit, your big tie, cufflinks. Um, so I worked in, I also worked in the city as well, a company called Olympian in Victoria, again in recruitment. And that is where I learned a lot of things and my mindset, how I'd think and how I'd deal with people. You'd be on the phone a lot, and you get a lot of negative. Ooh, how can spider? Um, but yeah, you deal with a lot of knockbacks and a lot of negative um, people on the phone daily, daily. Nope, not interested. Nope, not interested. In you. And I get it now. You know, when you cold call someone, if you're in that industry, it's very, very difficult to get people and hold them onto the phone and try and sell to them. But yeah, it was it was good times, real good times, good memories. Made a lot of money. Had so much fun as well. The staff were cool. I remember there was, there was another guy there. I can't think of his name. He was great at doing the deal. And at the very end, he struggled to close. He just couldn't. He, he, would, he would set it all up. And I'm like, right, close it. And he'd be like, oh, I don't know what to say, Jan. And I remember he'd say, Jan, can you close it for me? And I would literally do the last part of his deals and just close them for him. And then it led me right here to Yanomize, my baby my favorite business and the one that has been most successful. So that's just a brief look of where my life has come up until today the present at Yanomize. I will be shooting more content on how to start a business things that I struggled with, issues that I had, businesses that failed, and obviously the ones that became successful. Don't worry guys, I've got you. I know you enjoyed this sort of content, so I'm gonna bring loads more to you guys at home. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Tell your friends, Yanni from Yanomite. Take care.